Kimi no na wa your name is about a love story between two strangers, teenagers, who keep swapping bodies. Could the recent passing of a comet be the cause of their troubles? Now, after the description I gave, this may sound like a conventional story, but then the movie pulls the rug from under you about 50 minutes in, and you start to realize that this is maybe a time traveling or a ghost story or both. I've been delaying doing a review for this film because I don't know how to review it correctly. This reminds me of, in a way, my reviews for A Contract with God and True Story Swear I Got. Because despite how you feel about them, there isn't anything inherently bad about them. They're both executed extremely well. Whether you like them personally is a matter of preference. Oh well, I'll try giving it a go anyway. First up, the pros. The characters, I like the main lead personalities. They were relatable, even to an old fart like me. They reacted like a normal person would in their situation. One of my favorite parts of the film is when they're starting to get used to each other's lives and then try to help each other out. Another thing I really liked about the movie was the soundtrack and score. It was great and very memorable. The opening theme and animation is played twice within the first 30 minutes and it did remind me a bit of a TV opening. It displayed the characters and shows a snippet of what was going to happen in later in the film. Also the music really set the mood for the rest of the film as well and it helped move the story along in a great way. And as far as the direction and animation, it's great. There isn't any drop off at any point. At about the 61 minute mark, something happens and there's a mishmash of art styles. There's a montage that happens where one of the leads learns more about the life of someone and that they need to do something in order to stop an upcoming catastrophe. As for negatives, nothing major. I could point out the constant sky shots which seem to be a motif for the director, Makoto Shinkai. However, there is always a point to showing these shots in his films, and considering how it factors into the plot point in this film, it makes sense. Also, about 20 minutes in, I was thinking that the only the main cast would get some development and the supporting cast would just be set dressing. No. As the film goes on, the supporting cast play more of a role and are more interesting than I thought at first. Since I can't really think of a creative way to criticize the movie from this point on, let me just vaguely tell you some of my favorite moments in the film, both happy and sad. One, before the last act, when they search for each other and the main characters finally make contact. Two, the running boob joke. Just trust me on this. Three, the climax when you realize that there's going to be some things that they can change and some things that they can't change. Four, when you realize that each time when they go back into each other's bodies and then go back into theirs, their memories are slowly erased. Not only that, it seems like the people that are alive by the end at that time are also having their memories slowly erased about the incident as well. Five, the ending which is satisfying and it did make me a bit misty. Do I recommend this? You damn straight I would recommend this. This is one of the best films I've seen in the last few years. It's the best anime film I've seen in the last two years. It's beautifully acted, well shot, and just the right length. The music is used to enhance and at times progress the story. That said, I can't understand why this wasn't going to win the Oscar or receive a wide release in America. Now, putting aside the fact that a foreign anime film, a 2D anime film, or a non-Disney production isn't going to win an Oscar nowadays. Your Name isn't an all-ages film. It's more aimed for teenagers and older. Also, anime films throw in action scenes because they think this will keep the viewers, mostly kids, interest. There is an upcoming danger in this film, but it's not bombastic. After the opening of the film, I start to think that maybe this would have been better adapted as a TV series. While that could still happen, I'm still thinking that it was good that this was made into a film. While a series would delve more into the lives of the surrounding characters, it might also come off as padding. This film had a great beginning, middle, and end. 
It had a very linear type of storytelling, which makes sense considering this was adapted from a novel that was also written by Makoto Shinkai. This is a great film that many people should see. The love story isn't sappy. The comedy is well paced. Maybe the story will go over the heads of some kids under 10 years old, but teenagers and above, like I said before, should really appreciate. If you like this film, then here are some other films by Makoto Shinkai that are available on DVD and Blu-ray and legal streaming that you should check out. Voices of a Distant Star, 5 centimeters per second, Children Who Chase Lost Voices, The Place Promised in Our Early Years, and The Garden of Words. Now here are some films that came out over the last few years, also from Japan, that you should also check out. He didn't direct them, but they are still really good. Wolf Children, The Boy and the Beast, The Tale of Princess Kaguya, and The Wind Rises. All those are great films. Please check them out. If you like this video, then please share and subscribe. I'm still on my quest for 1,000 subscribers by next year. And until next time, have a good day.